Hi guys, welcome back. This is Micromus at Image Tutorials and today I want to show you guys a really cool preset that I uh, ran into in Maya uh, and that will allow you to create an underwater scene. Um, I personally think it's very cool. Uh, hopefully you share that sentiment, okay? All right, now like I said, it's a preset. So how do we get that loaded? Okay, we're gonna go up to Window, General Editors and we're gonna go down to Visor. In our visor screen, we have a lot of options to choose from. In this case, we're going to go with ocean examples. And here we got our underwater caustics. We're going to select that guy, right click, and import Maya file. We'll just minimize that, which will give us this. Now, this doesn't look like an ocean bottom or uh, floor, whatever. But if we just look at it from this angle and we just quickly hit render, we're already going to see this. Now, this doesn't look great, right? You can kind of imagine that it has some watery, uh, you know, feel to it, but not too great. How we can fix that really easy is just to simply switch the angle, okay? We're just going to rotate. We're going to zoom in a little bit. So we got our horizon back here, and I'll explain all this stuff in a sec, okay? And we're just going to re-render. And already this looks much, much better, right? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, first of all, this is not a static image. It's an animation. So if I were to increase this to 200 frames, let's say, we'll go to our start frame and we'll hit play. Nothing is going on at all. And this shot, however, if you go back to the front and let's say we render out this image, Okay, and I'll save that for a comparison. Okay, so keep image. I'm going to minimize that. We're going to play out the animation for a few frames, and then we're going to stop it somewhere around here. We're going to hit render again. And let's compare these two. As you can see, different, right? Okay. So what happens if you render out, let's say, 100 frames, then you got an animated ocean floor. You got this whole caustic effect moving around, very, very realistic. Okay, cool. So we're not going to do a batch render right now, but that you get the point. Now, for this setup here, what do we got? Let's go to Window and Outliner. If you look in our Outliner, you got a couple of things that are part of this preset. First of all, we got the environmental fog. That's that ring here, okay? Uh, you got this kind of fog effect underwater, this eerie look, so to speak. That's created by this ring. You can select it, you can scale it up, scale it down, and so forth. We got this directional light here, and I'll show you that one. We got an ambient light up there, okay? And we got an underwater camera over there. Now you can decide to use the camera or not, that's up to you, but it's part of the preset. Okay, so let's say we got this. Now what else can we do? For example, what we can do is, and I'll just uh, bookmark this, view bookmark, edit bookmark, let's say under water, apply and close. Let's see, I don't think that one took because I had a space in it. Well, actually it did. Okay, cool. Okay, we're going to create, a, let's say, a miniature submarine, right? And I'm not going to model a submarine. I'm just going to create a simple object. We're going to flip that over to, let's say, uh, where is it? Up there, minus 90 degrees, so it's level. Okay, so if we were to look at this view here, and we did a quick render, you would see the ocean floor, you see my object, and you see some lighting going on on top. However, no shadow on the bottom floor. So let's fix that, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our uh, directional light, and we are gonna go down to, where is it, where is it, shadows? Okay, and instead of using depth map shadows, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna use mental, uh, sorry, ray trace shadows, okay? We're gonna increase the rays to eight by eight. 
And before we get to see this effect, we're going to go to our render settings. I'll just get rid of this stuff here. We're going to go to our render settings. We're going to switch to metal ray, which is important. We're going to go to our quality tab. We're going to go to ray tracing and we'll increase these to eight by eight. And this should be the sum of these two. So 16. All right. Let's give this another render. Okay. And now suddenly our object has a shadow on the ocean floor. Now, obviously, based on the direction of your directional light, you can have that straight under your object or somewhere left or right from it and so forth. Okay. Okay. So we got our fake submarine. Now what? How about we animate our submarine? Okay. So we're going to go to frame one of our animation. We've got 200 frames. This is our starting point. We're going to hit S on the keyboard and we're going to, you know, have our first keyframe. Now let's say I want this to move over 100 frames. So I'm going to click on frame 100. I'm going to hit W and I'm going to pull this over here. So it's just still in our scene. Okay. I'm going to hit S again on my keyboard. Go back to the start of our animation and hit play. And there is our submarine. Okay. Just going to stop this. Go back to frame one. Play a little bit, stop it somewhere around here, hit render again, and there would be our submarine. All right? Cool. So if you were to batch render this, you would see this scene with an animated uh, quote unquote submarine. So it would come from here and move over there. All right? Now that's pretty cool. We're going to go back to the start. Now, the thing is that when you have objects moving underwater, divers, submarines, and so forth, you usually see something like bubbles, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, an emitter, and we're going to parent that to our submarine, and that will give us that effect, okay? So we're going to go in our Dynamics menu uh, to Particles, and we're going to select Create Emitter, which will create our emitter right there. We're going to move that over. Just hit F to zoom in. Where are we at? Uh, okay, somewhere around here. Pull that down. I'll just switch views. That will make it a bit quicker. And I want this to be somewhere around there on my submarine. Let's see if this angle is okay as well. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay. So let's go back to our bookmark. So our submarine's over there, and I'll just show you that when we hit play, the submarine will take off and the emitter will not. You see? Okay. So what we need to do is go to frame one again. We have our emitter selected. We're going to shift select our submarine, okay? And we're going to hit P on the keyboard. So these are now parented. So now this emitter should follow this uh, submarine around. Okay, let's give it a try. And there you go. It's following it. Okay. We're going to go back to frame one, play it a little bit, stop it somewhere here. Now we're going to select our particles. Now what's important here is that uh, bubbles usually go up, right? Uh, so uh, let's see where we're at with our particle shape here. Just uh, bear with me for a sec, guys. I just need to find this. Hang on. All right. So we're going to select our particles. We're going to go to fields and select gravity. Okay. Now that typically will want the bubbles to fall down. So let's check that. There we go. They are. So we're going to play a little bit stop it, select our particles, and uh, let's go to our gravity field. And the direction in this case shouldn't be minus one, it should be one. So they would be falling up like air bubbles do. Okay, go back to our start frame, play again. And they're still falling down. 
uh, because I didn't hit select. Sorry, guys. There we go. Let's try that again. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, what do we got so far? We got our scene. We got our submarine. Let's go to our bookmark. Underwater. There we go. Let's hit play and see what happens. Okay. So we got this submarine crossing our scene. You can just see the uh, the bubbles going up. So what we can do is take this guy, pull it down just a bit, go back to our bookmark, play again. Ah, sorry, we just uh, changed frame one. Doesn't matter. All right, we'll do this. That's what that will give us a bit better view. Go back to frame one. Okay, so let's stop right there. Okay, now let's render this. Okay, so there's your ocean floor. I'll just choose a different angle to make it look a bit better something like that. We'll take this guy, we'll move him down. Uh, actually, we'll, let's see if we can fix that. Just want to have a nice angle for a render. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we're a bit closer to the ocean floor, which should give us a bit better effect. Let's hit render. Okay, so we got our caustic effects on the floor. We got our shading on the ocean floor. We got some shadows on the top of our object and we got some particles. Now you can change the color of these particles. You can change the size. You can make them bigger and so forth. But all in all, this is the effect that I was going for. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.